welcome. Good morning, Ocean Robin. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy to be with you. Me too. Thank you for being here with us. We would like to know a little bit about your family background. Sure. Uh, my grandfather founded an ice cream company called Baskin Robbins or, or 31 okay. Flavors. And my dad, John, grew up with an ice cream cone shaped swimming pool mm -hmm. in the backyard and 31 flavors of ice cream in the freezer. Mm -hmm. uh, he was groomed to one day join in running the family company. But when he was in his early 20s, he was offered that chance, said mm -hmm. no. And he walked away from a path that was practically paved with gold and yes. with ice cream to follow his own rocky road, as we say in our family. Rocky Road is one of the flavors of Baskin Robbins as well. And he ended up uh, becoming a best-selling author writing about food and health. And the media called him the rebel without a cone. You know, here was this guy who, this would be ice cream heir who walks away from it all and, and becomes a spokesperson for health. And now his uncle, Bert Baskin, co-founder of the company, uh, was a very successful entrepreneur. Uh, but he died of heart disease at the age of 54 because he didn't have his health. And my dad's dad, Urban Robbins, my grandfather, mm -hmm. uh, was on a similar path. And in, in his early 70s, his doctors said he had serious heart disease and diabetes and mm -hmm. weight issues. And they told him he didn't have long to live. And uh, But he made a different choice than his brother-in-law, Bert Baskin, had made. He read my dad's books. Mm -hmm. and changed his diet, gave up ice cream, gave mm -hmm. up sugar, uh, moved, ate a lot less animal products and a lot more whole plant foods, and got tremendous results. He lost 30 pounds. He got all of his diabetes and blood pressure medications. He reversed his symptoms, and he lived 19 more vibrant, healthy years. Wow, that's really So we've seen in our family what can happen when we follow the standard American diet is that we get the standard American diseases but we've also seen that we can make a change. And so I'm grateful to be able to follow, build on this legacy, both of my grandfather and his huge impact in the world. He inspired a lot of people to have fun with food. Um, and then my dad said, hey, we can have more pleasure with health mm -hmm. than with sickness. And now I'm the CEO of Food Revolution Network and we're working for healthy, ethical, sustainable food for everybody. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 500,000 members. And our wow. commitment is we want to have a healthy food system. And how can we do that? Because what I found is that most of us, you know, we have not the awareness of how bad we eat. Uh, I, I download your, uh, how, your guide for healthy food that you have in your website. And I realized that many food that I eat, including the egg, is not as healthy as I eat. Yeah, I saw it. Well. There are four basic ingredients, I think, mm -hmm. to the food revolution diet. Mm -hmm. And one is eat less sugar and processed junk. Mm -hmm. You know, things that have a lot of chemicals, things that are... The, the, the Mother Nature uh, makes things in ways that our bodies know how to absorb and use well. But laboratories tend to um, make foods that are, um, that are damaged, actually. Um, we separate out the bran and the germ, and we lose the fiber and the minerals. Mm -hmm. We take off the peel, and we lose some of the critical nutrients it brings. So whole foods are actually what our body was designed for. It's what our ancestors ate for you know countless millennia. So eating less processed junk mm -hmm. and refined foods is one of the most important steps you can take to help your body get the nourishment it really needs to thrive all the vitamins and minerals. We need to eat more food that is plants and less food that comes from factories. And number two is eat less animal products. Mm -hmm. The average American gets about 30% of their calories from animal products, meat, dairy, eggs, fish, mm -hmm. all of that. And you know whether you eat none or less is up to your own body and your own values and your own life experience. But you know most researchers recognize that the people in the world who live the longest and healthiest lives are getting at most five or 10% of their calories from animal products, mm -hmm. not 30%. So we need to cut down a lot on that. And we find that red meat is associated with higher rates of heart disease and many forms of cancer. We find that processed meats are, are known carcinogens. That means they, they cause cancer. We find that uh, when we eat more whole plant foods and less animal products, we get more phytonutrients more flavonoids and antioxidants um, 
vitamins and minerals that our bodies need to thrive. So those are the two things we eat less of, and then we want to eat more whole plant foods, more real foods that come from the earth, and we want to uh, eat consciously sourced foods. Like it matters who grows it, it matters where it comes from, and here's why. A lot of our foods are contaminated with pesticides. Our animal products are coming from factory farms where the animals are essentially being tortured. Mm. And so when we eat food that is the product of misery, that was grown by farm workers who were exploited uh, or sexually harassed in the fields, when we eat food that comes from animals that were tortured and pumped full of antibiotics and hormones just to keep them alive in miserable conditions, when we eat food that's saturated with pesticides, then all of that impacts our health because it's not the same food. You know, food that's grown on healthy, living, vibrant soil that isn't poisoned is going to be better for us. Mm -hmm. So when we eat consciously sourced foods, we're, we're, we're putting our stake in the ground and saying, I care about the world around me. I don't want to contribute to violence against animals or humans or farm laborers. I want a world where people who grow my food earn enough money to feed their own families. And when we participate in fair trade, in organic, in local foods, in humane and pasture-raised foods, we are contributing to a food system that is more ethical, more sustainable, and also more healthy for us. So those are the four basic ingredients. Again, less processed junk and sugar, less animal products, more whole plant foods, and conscious sourcing. For example, I live here in North Miami, and you know, the life is very busy here. Most of the people are working, I don't know how many hours per day. How can these people uh, have a healthy lifestyle where they really don't have time for them, for themselves? Yeah, a lot of people feel like um, it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. to do the right thing. And this is, you know, one of the things that bugs me so much is that healthy food costs more generally. Many healthy foods cost more. And they also take more time because we live in a society in the modern industrialized world mm -hmm. in which junk food is subsidized by our governments. It's normalized by our institutions. It's advertised by marketers. And so the path of least resistance is a fast track to mm -hmm. suffering and disease and even death. So in that context, it does take some extra work to do the right thing for your body. I wish it didn't. Mm -hmm. I wish that it was easier. But as long as our fast foods are also junk foods, as long as our convenience foods are also junk foods, as long as McDonald's is selling white flour buns and sugary processed junk instead of real food, and that's what's everywhere, mm -hmm. it's going to be harder to do the right thing for our families. But the good news is it can happen. And the key is getting healthy habits in place. There is nothing inherently more financially viable about taking Mother Earth's bounty and stripping it of vitamins and minerals, wrapping it in a package, processing it in a laboratory, and then shipping it around the world. Real whole food can actually be very affordable, but it does take learning how to develop the habits. For example, beans and whole grains, mm -hmm. quinoa, you know, vegetables, cabbage, carrots, onions, these are not expensive foods. You get a lot of nutrients per dollar. Um, as far as time is concerned, a lot of people find it helpful to make a big pot of something on the weekends, a big soup or mm -hmm. a big casserole, and then have leftovers during the week or freeze to-go containers, and then you have them for lunch. Get a potluck going, get a, get a, a food share program going with other people. So For example, on Monday, I might make food for my coworkers, and then mm -hmm. on Tuesday, they make food for me for lunch. That's nice. And we all make healthy food for each other, and then you build social connection around healthy food. Make some extra and give it to your neighbors, and then maybe they can do the same for you next week. That's a great so, idea. Yeah. So these are all steps that we can take that can actually save time and build social connection. Um, Cooking in quantity is big. Sharing with others to lighten the load is big. Healthy habits where you uh, you find the foods you like and you keep stocking up on them. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people honestly don't have that many things they cook regularly. We exactly. have a few things that are like our starting rotation and we just return to those. Mm -hmm. So just get a few healthy things that you memorize so you don't need a recipe. You can make them easily that you like. Maybe you decide you like oatmeal in the morning. Maybe you like I, I, my favorite breakfast is a chia porridge. I soak mm. it the night before. I just soak 
in some uh, soy milk or homemade yogurt of some kind. I soak chia seeds, blue bit, frozen blueberries, a little vanilla, a dash of maple syrup. And um, the next morning, I've got this incredible porridge that's uh, full of omega-3 fatty acids and phytonutrients that fight cancer and Alzheimer's. And it, it tastes delicious and it's ready to go for breakfast. Yeah, it tastes good. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. These supermarkets that are everywhere that uh, sell organic food, but all these products are uh, packages and come from all around the world. So for this is a misconception about this because most of the people go to those supermarkets because they think that it's healthy to buy there. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> what can we say about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we have a lot of misinformation about food Mm -hmm. because um, the, the, the status quo is making some companies very rich. And so they have an investment in us not changing our diets. Um, so they advertise, they make themselves sound healthy and natural. And uh, they, you know, if a product says low sugar or sugar free, sometimes it's sweetened with artificial chemicals or it's deep fried, you know, or foods might say fat-free, but they're full of sugar. So beware of health claims. Read the ingredients list and see what's actually in the food. If there are ingredients you don't know how to pronounce, that's a warning sign. If there are ingredients you know are bad, that's a warning sign. So the more you can choose real foods with short ingredient lists or that don't come from a package at all, the healthier you're going to be. There are, you know, restaurants even, uh, there, are, there are almost no restaurants that use all healthy ingredients. If you were to go into their kitchen and see what they're using, a lot of it's probably not things you would even bring into your own home. But because they don't have to share what their ingredients are and it's all invisible, they can do whatever they want. And of course, even fancy restaurants that are very expensive still have an investment in saving money. So if it's cheaper to buy, for example, big vats of oil that's made from cotton seed um, or that's highly saturated or even hydrogenated, um, and then they can keep reusing the oil and frying things in it over and over and over again, it stays out all day, it might start to get rancid. But until it tastes bad, you're not going to know that as a consumer. So we have to, um, to a certain extent, learn to take responsibility for our food by making more of it in-house. Um, I, I wish that wasn't the case, but that is the reality of our times. But here's the thing, what's at stake is our very lives themselves. Mm -hmm. If we don't make a change, we are on a track to a society where two thirds of our population is overweight or obese, where a third of our kids are gonna get diabetes in their lifetimes, a world where 14 million people die of heart disease every year, eight million of cancer, a world where it is considered normal to feel sick mm. and to take more and more prescription drugs. You know, most seniors are taking six, eight, 10 prescription drugs every day of their lives. Half of our seniors over the age of 85 have Alzheimer's. This is not normal. It, it might be typical, but it doesn't have to be normal. We can create a new norm where we're healthy and vibrant. What is your health worth to you? Is it worth the work to create new habits so that you can have a structure in place to support a healthy life. I say it is. And yes. I think it's time to seize the day and make the choices that will enable us to, to love foods that love us back. We have to take a consciousness about our foods. This is really important in our life. Ocean, can you tell us how can we find you or go to your website? Because you have a lot of things that you offer, new information about what is happening Absolutely. Just go to foodrevolution.org and you can find our website. You can join in our email list um, mm -hmm. and you can participate in the food revolution. Um, we have a blog. You can um, probably have your browser translate everything. So our blog is in English. Mm -hmm. but you can translate to Spanish if you prefer. Um, we also offer a food revolution summit. You can yes. sign up at foodrevolutionsummit.org. And... Um, it's all in English, but we also have an empowerment package. We interview 24 of the top food experts on the planet 
-hmm. And after you sign up, you can get that. And we, we, uh, we get all of those um, interviews transcribed and translated into Spanish. Oh, that's so, great. So you can get the empowerment package mm -hmm. and then you'll have all the Spanish translations um, professionally translated. So, because uh, we want to get this information out as widely as we possibly can. So again, foodrevolution.org is the website for our main organization and foodrevolutionsummit.org is to learn about the Food Revolution Summit and the interviews with leading food experts. I already registered. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Ocean, thank you very much. We have already our 15 minutes. Thank you so much for much valuable information. It has been a pleasure to have you here. And I hope we can engage a lot of people to do this lifestyle and follow you, you know? Thank, Thank you so you much. So much. <laughs> It's been a pleasure to be with you. Mucho, mucho gracias. <laughs> Tan bello. <laughs> gracias a ti, Osha. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.